Hi, 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 hi. Welcome to Joy Feeder International. So today we got another exciting, you know, story or how do I say it? discussion, you know, chat. Let's let's chat with you. What does Joy Feeder International represent? It's all about helping us to think rightly anything that can put us right back on track so my name is joy fido and welcome on board so what's the title today what's what's the topic today i call it um shift your mind shift your mind and change your life shift your mind change your life now why am i saying we should shift our mind I'll tell you why. Our mind is where everything happens. You know, it's one of the things we talk about over and over on this channel. Um, personal development, motivation, empowerment, uh, professional development, everything that makes us who we are starts from our mind. Our mind it's I, I was explaining to my son it's like the kitchen of the human body why kitchen that's where all the food is cooked so when we cook the food then we eat so everything that we think about everything that makes our thoughts starts in the mind and it's those thoughts you know oh, what if I do this and what if I do that and what if that doesn't happen and all of those things Hence, let's start thinking because when we think, we then act on our thoughts and our thoughts then become our habits. Our habits then becomes our life. And so that's how it just flows. So if we can shift our mind from where it is now, we will change our life. And one of the first questions I will ask is, how is your life going? Is it is it going the direction you want it to go is it what you were hoping it should be because I tell you what as as a teenager a young child we have dreams and so we start dreaming oh when I grow up you know you say to your young child when you grow up what are you going to be what do you want to be what do you aspire to be we still say it today every time an adult miss a child what do you want to be and as they are going to school, starting their secondary school, primary school, university, what do you want to be when you grow up? And so we have all these amazing dreams. And then what happens? As we grow up, the reality changes. Reality of what we've seen ourselves to become changes from what we're dreaming about. So how do we get it back? How do we get it back to sync with what you what we were thinking about when we were younger? Because trust me, those dreams you had as a young child are absolutely possible. They are absolutely possible. What has changed is the things we've seen in our life has changed. Reality of what we wished for has moved away from what we were hoping it would be. So shift your life i mean shift your mindset and you shift your life so our mindset has been put in such a place that if we don't pull it away from there our life is going to continue being what we are not hoping for and this is why personal development is just one of those things that's going to be here it's not running away because lots of us are lost and you know when the Bible says, be born again, be born again, people think, when they say be born again, that, okay, it means go back into your mommy's womb and let your mom give birth to you again. No. And then some of us, you know, I remember in secondary school when we had oh, those born again Christians, and we just think, oh, it's a way of behaving, you know, you have to, you have to be like this and be like that, you don't have to, you know, like, Stunt. There, there's this, you know, group of um, church back back in Nigeria called Deeper Life, and the thing with Deeper Life is they they're very, um, they kind of like 
restrict, very restrictive. And so you can't make up, you can't dress in a certain way. And, and so people were concerned like, if I want to be born again, does that mean I have to be like that? And so you put people off. They didn't want to know about being born again. But being born again, shifting your mindset, coming to your realization, something I'm coming out with, I call it self-realization. All of these things are about you rethinking, about you shifting the way you think right now. Because what's happened is, over the years, where we are right now, it's made up of all the decisions we made over the years. It's made up of all the choices we made over the years. And so, all we have to do now is look back and say, ha, huh, those choices I made did not serve me well. They did not serve me well. That's why I'm here now. That's why I'm not happy with what, I, what I'm seeing. So how do I change my choices now such that I'll be happy with what I'll see tomorrow? Because you have to remember this or know this. The choices you're making right now is what's going to come up tomorrow as the reality you're going to see. So you see how our mindset is so important? Because at every point in time in life, we're given choices. So sometimes it's either this or that. Even in our marriage. Oh, should I have married that other one instead of this one? With our friends. Should I have been friends with this person instead of that one? With the food we're eating. Oh, I'd rather eat this one instead of that one. And so, one of the things I will guide you, based on the little I know, over the years is why are you making those decisions and those choices you have to do your own little soul searching ask yourself is it going to serve me well this choice i'm making is it for my own good and i'll give you a simple example food let's look at food food is one of those places where lots of us get lost we completely get lost why? Because of our test boards. I had to go into studying nutrition for that. I needed to understand what's going on with food. Because again, like I always like to share, I've lost quite a lot of relatives. And when I had to read that book, Biology of Belief, the understanding was um, your genes dictate your life. And so if you were born with a certain gene, forget it. Whatever you do, that's it, you're, you're tied to that. That's going to happen to you because it happened to your dad and it happened to your granddad. So that's you. But biology of belief says no. It's, it's the environment that dictates those things. But long before I read that, I was curious. I wanted to go into nutrition to understand is it the food my parents were eating that caused this or my relatives? Was it something we did wrong? And so I started understanding started reading and there's a book I read then which was say you know death by prescription and so most of us we end up in the hospital being diagnosed wrongly being given the wrong medication and then we end up dying we end up dying and this could have been avoided there's a saying that if you eat um, if you don't eat your food as your medicine healthy food, you end up eating your medicine as your food. And this is happening. I've seen it. I see it happen to lots of people. Because if you don't watch what you're putting in now into this physical body, because it is a body that's carrying our soul. And like any machine, think, think about your car. If you put the wrong petrol in the car, will it run? That's the same way, if you treat any equipment, these are all man-made, right? Man-made equipment, treat it wrongly. Carry your phone, bang it on the floor, every day they will floor, floor, floor. Let me on, my kids. They will put their, their phone in, in the charger. It will be there 24 hours, 24 seven, phone is charging. It's, 
he's on the phone i mean he's being charged and they are listening to something and say give that phone a break put it out let it rest because even man-made equipment needs rest so you're putting the wrong food inside your body and you think it, nothing will go wrong oh yeah i mean it can't go wrong but we can we still do what they call mot we go and check it is everything okay so the human body which from the nutrition i did responds to nature because he understands nature we are made of nature so nature will work well with nature so when we look at all these man-made foods especially here in the west and one of the things I've, I've, I've come to understand is you know with obesity which is one of the biggest problems we deal with in the west why because there's excess there's too much around us too much manufactured created all of the chemicals kind of food around us so we end up just putting it in we end up putting all this chemical based food in then we expect it not to the body should not complain it should just be happy with it now question i ask especially with obesity have you seen a starving child struggling from obesity simple question let's start thinking have you seen a starving child this child is starving but he's struggling with obesity no that is not possible so there's something not right we are putting too much in and very little coming out so when my understanding of you know calories and calories in and calories out there's something now called zero zero um uh, uh zero zero base weight loss or something like that if if too much is going in and less is coming out it's simple mathematics more is going in less is coming out because we're not active enough and so if we are actively using all that food I, i've seen some of those programs on youtube where you see people who are these weightlifters and they eat like crazy but because they're busy working so hard it doesn't turn out to be a problem so if we're putting too much in and we're not working hard enough to bring it out, then it becomes a problem. So it takes me back to what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is, if we are thinking that we're going to put a lot of thoughts that are not going to benefit us into our head and we expect better result, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. So that's a good example. So if we put the wrong foods in, don't expect good health to come out. And so if our thoughts is negative, are we expecting our life to be positive? So this self-realization and self-understanding and you know, like the prodigal son realizing that, oh, oh I've been away from my parents, uh, from my dad and, and there's so much wealth where I come from and this is me struggling and suffering here why don't i go home and beg apologize to my dad and ask him to take me back and forgive me and get my life back on track thing self-realization so mindset creates what our future becomes or creates what our life is so the thoughts we put in is what's going to make who we are so just like the computer which the human mind is it's from what they say it's it, it, it processes information in trillions is is the biggest computer you can ever imagine why if you even don't want to think about it it is human mind that creates all this equipment we're dealing with it's the human mind ai facebook google human beings created them youtube so if it's the human mind that's creating these things just like the computer think about it garbage in garbage out garbage in garbage out so if we don't put the right information in our mind we should not expect an amazing lifestyle we shouldn't expect it And so when I, when I think 
about this most times I look at us and I say wow look at where we are today down to the wrong decisions and choices we made so how do we change this now how, how do we how do we get born again born again with new mindsets rethink our lives such that things change things become better I've, I've done a video where I said accept your 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 wealth or accept your riches there is so much abundance around us so much abundance but you see the way we view things is where the problem is what I call it I call it poverty mindset and, and I, I try to understand what I'm trying to preach here or talk about here. Whenever I want to learn something, I put my mind into learning something, I get it. Just like Biology of Belief was trying to explain in that book. It says, anything you want to do, anything you put your mind on, you can do it. Obama said it too. Yes, we can. And he made it. Once he put his mind on it, he made it. This is what happens with the mind. Once you put your mind on something, you hone in on, this is what I want to do. What then happens is, the mind will start to find solutions to these things for you. It will start to find solutions. I have experimented this so many times. I said to myself, ha, huh, this is what I'm going to be creating. And then as I go out, what happens is my my eyes start to start, start picking out those things out to me. There's something they call RAS, reticular, um, I can't, I've forgotten what it's called, but one of those, what, it's called RAS in NLP, is something I did years ago. And what happens is, you know when they had that book, The Secret Law of Attraction, and you start, you start to attract that thing. What happens is your eyes, your, your I don't know if I should say your hindsight, but there's something in your brain that now pulls whatever it is you were thinking about towards you. Like you see it. You go, ah, oh, that was the idea I had. That was the idea. Because you attracted it because you put your mind on it. But now think about it. Before your mind said, I'm going to do that. What, were those things not there? They were there. They were there. But your mind was not on it. So if you don't start thinking, of something to say, I want to do this. Your mind is not going to find that thing for you. It will not find it for you. So that's why we need to start putting our minds in the right places. Anything you are really looking for, put your mind in that place. And that's why they say the mind is faster than even the speed of light. Because it's instantaneous. They call it uh, um, um, imagination. Your imagination, which is your dreamland imagination, ima, imagine nation, imagine world. You're imagining it. And children are so good at this. A child can just sit down, you know, some people call it daydreaming. You can just sit down there and be dreaming. <laughs> and they'll be laughing and they're so happy in their own little world because. They've created this bubble around themselves and they are floating in it. And then what we, all the people uh, living in a dream world. But you see, that dream world can come to reality. And that's why, as a child, you dream of something. You can hold on, people say, hold on to your dreams. You can hold on to that dreams and bring it to reality. And that's why they also say, be careful what you what you think about or what you wish for, because you might just get it. When you wish for something, you strongly wish for it, and you keep pushing it into your thoughts and want to have this. It comes to pass. Why? It's not, it's not magic. Nature brings it to you. This is where it could go wrong. Negativity. Because what happens is, is it unfortunately for us, our mind does not know the difference between right and wrong. It doesn't know. It just knows there's a wish in your head. And the subconscious mind, which is our database, just believes, I have to find that thing and I have to connect it to your reality. 
And so this is your, let's say you're having an issue with somebody, you're hating that person. All you're going to be getting back is hate. Because whenever you put out there, you get it back. And most times I say to people, just look in the mirror. Whatever you have portrayed to the world is what the world is giving right back to you. So if you're a happy, bubbly person, you find that bubbly people come towards you. If you're looking for something excitingly, looking for that thing will find its way towards you. And I was reading, no, I was watching one of those videos, I can't remember who I watched. And it says, that thing you are looking for is actually looking for you. And I thought, wow. So it's it's not like it's magic. You see all these people who are doing so well and you're wishing, a, I wish I was like them. Look, they're doing so well. Why am I not doing so well? Because you haven't put in those things. Your mindset is not in the right place yet. Once you put your mindset in the right place and cut away negativity. Negativity is the worst killer that we have. But we don't know it. Because when you're angry, what happens is you block. You block positivity. You block nature. You block good. And so what, what you are then attracting is equal negativity. And then you sit and you wish, but, but how come? How come it's not working for me? How come it's working for others? So it's all in your mindset. We need to look for ways, look for ways to say, how can we, how can we pull out the good in us? Because we all have good. I know we all have good and we all have bad. But you see, we have to allow our good to overpower our bad. And you find some people who just enjoy saying they're bad. You know what? Well, I don't care. I'm this bad person. To what benefit? What do you gain out of being bad? Because you see, like I've said in so many other videos, this space and time we have in this reign called life, it comes and goes. Now, what do you want people to remember you by when you're done? Oh, she was this wicked person who really hated everyone. This person never cared about anybody. This person was always selfish after himself or herself. This person locked himself inside and never said hello to anyone. This person didn't have any friends. I mean, there was that movie, I remember that movie. Um, it's like a Christmas movie. Uh, um, Disney World. And uh, what was his name again? I've forgotten his name, but he he is so selfish that even his staff he won't pay them. And uh, Mickey Mouse was one of the actors. And in the end, the the, um, the the angel of Christmas or spirit of Christmas came. There were three of them, so they were just showing him different part aspects of his life. Scrooge. Ebenezer, Ebenezer Scrooge. They were showing him different aspects of his life. And what then happened? What, one of the scenes, they now showed him when he died. And nobody was at his funeral. And they buried him. So he's standing there and saying, So who died here? They said, Oh, that's you. You died. What? Nobody is here. Yeah. You didn't have any friends and no one cared about you. And so that's you there. What? That's not right. <laughs> no, 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 no. So that was the only thing that got him. They showed him everything else. It didn't bother him. But when he died and saw that he was a, no one came. And that's what we should ask ourselves. Is that the type of life we want? You know, because seriously, life finishes. Life expires. So if today you feel, oh yeah, I'm top of the pops. I'm. I'm the champion. I, I, I have it all. I'm like the rich man. I have it all. Relax. Enjoy my soul. Don't, don't even have headache. You have everything you ever wish for. You don't own your life. And so it finishes. 
and God says, okay, you know what, you've had your time now, you can come back, and then you, you see yourself, you're like, why? And it's, if nothing else, you know, I've been to these workshops, and, and that's what he says to every day, he says, his biggest dream is that when he dies, people should at least say, he touched my life. That's, that's all he wishes for. That people should remember him that he touched their lives. Isn't that something worth thinking about? Because if all we are thinking about is how to hate, how to be angry, how to wind people up, how to in, you know irritate everyone, how to be upset, it leads us nowhere. And so the focus is so much as shift your life. Because when you shift your life, when you change your mindset, things change. You change your mindset, things change. Because like I said, we live in a life on, of abundance. But because our mind is so closed up, because we're so poverty dri driven, we don't see anything around us. We don't see it. And what I always say to us is, knowledge is power. I know, you know, lots of people say, oh yeah, it's not, it's not just knowledge that is power. It's true, because you may have knowledge and you don't use it. You may have knowledge and you don't use it. But you see, that's why you then hear people say, actionable knowledge is power. So knowledge you have, which you actually action done, is power but see knowledge is not just power knowledge is wealth what you know is what will create your wealth that's what's going to bring you that money you're looking for because generally in this whole world right now ask two people ask ten people what do you want everybody's going to say i want money most times we don't think oh happiness oh peace of mind oh i want clarity i want purpose i have me i want mission i want direction no, everybody, money. I want to be a celebrity. Fine. But knowledge is what brings all of that. Knowledge is what gives you wealth. Knowledge is what gives you health. Remember I was telling you about how I had to go and read up on nutrition. I had to take up a course in nutrition. To understand how the human body works. And I'm telling you, it was shocking the amount of information out there. Shocking. By the time you begin to look at the digestive tract, by the time you understand from the minute the food enters your mouth and, and goes through the, you know, the throat or the thorax as they call it, and then starts to go down into the stomach and how the stomach breaks down the food and then it travels to the small intestine and then into the large intestine and then the food gets to gets assimilated into the bloodstreams, the violin that takes the food in, by the time you know all of that, and then it, from the large cells, and then it starts to go down, and then it comes out of you in the form of waste. Each of these parts of the body are so intricate that you go, "Oh my gosh!" And I just eat, and I don't think. You just we just eat, and we don't think. And if I didn't go searching for that, I would never know. Because you see, one little thing goes wrong, this human body that we have, it is irreplaceable. Yes, you hear about all these, um, um, uh, what do they, pharmaceutical companies um, uh, harvesting uh, 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 parts from animals and then they are making all these uh, chemicals or what's it, parts, little, little parts and then they put it and then they replace your hip and they replace your leg and they replace your by the time you start messing around with nature, things start to go bad. Then that's medicine. I won't complain about it. It's a major, major part of who we are. It prolongs our lives. It makes life better. But if we can help it by putting the right things in. So understanding all of that process gave me knowledge. And that knowledge I started thinking about. And you know what they say, ignorance is bliss. When you don't know, you don't know. And so, when we then are busy taking on whatever 
you know, people walk into the supermarket or the, and just push these trolleys around and they fill it up with everything they see because it's so exciting, it's there. You know, we throw it in, throw it in, throw it in, and then two days later, things start to go wrong. What most medical people are explaining to us today, or nutritionists are explaining to us today, most of the problems we're dealing with right now is lifestyle based. Lifestyle based. Because yes, most of us would like to hide behind genes. Biology and Believe has told us that is not happening. They're calling it epigenetics. It is not there. It is lifestyle based. So are we educating ourselves enough to understand that most of those things we're seeing in the shops are not for our own good? Mindset. Thinking. And now what I say to people is, when you see that food, think first. How is this going to benefit me? I'm not saying, oh, every day of your life, don't take a break and just say, oh yeah, you know what? Sorry today, I just want to have a bit of taste buds. But see, most of us respond to our taste buds. Oh, it's not sweet. It should be sweet. But see, that thing that's so sweet is what makes sweeting you to where you don't want to go. So, we have to think. We have to think. So, all the choices we are making, are they beneficial? Because those choices are what's going to create what we have tomorrow. The choices we're making today is what's going to create what we have tomorrow. And I remember, I can't remember his name right now, but one of the things he says, do today what others won't do. And what are those things that most people will not do? They will not wake up late at night to read. They will not even want to read. They won't even want to find out what makes what happen. They're not even curious enough at all. They just, people invest in knowledge as we created this home training program. 30 DVDs that's here for you to gain knowledge that will help you earn money. People invest in it. But you know what? There are people who will never do it. What? Why should I put money into that? No, I would rather go get it free. So he says, do today what others won't do. So you can have tomorrow what others will not have. That's such a good saying. Do today what others won't do. So you can have tomorrow what others will have. So the type of choices you're making today, allow it to be clear in your head. Clarity. Get clarity. Understand why you're taking that decision. So you want to gain knowledge, you go into it, you ask yourself, why am I taking this knowledge on? Is it for my own benefit? How is it going to benefit me? Of what use is it going to be? How will I share this knowledge? All of that, you do it. Because you analyze it, you've explained it. If you're eating something, you ask yourself, is this useful for me? Is it feeding my cells? Is it going to be, are there some nutrients in this? Or is this just what they call empty calories? Just throwing it in for the test buds? Once you've answered, you do it. Allow your mind to think. Whatever you take on, whatever you're taking on, because that's where that mind shifting helps you. Because if you don't shift your mind, your life is not going to change. And that's where we say, garbage in, garbage out. Because one of the best ways to allow your mind to shift is what they call long they call it lifelong learning. Lifelong learning. You're constantly learning. This has helped me over the years. Lifelong learning. I have not stopped learning. What I say to people is, it's not over till it's over. People in their 80s are still learning. There was a, 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 you know, a story I read somewhere of somebody in her 80s was learning a language. Because you see, the thing with the human brain is, the more you learn, the more you grow more brain cells. 
The more you promote brain cells, and the brain cells is what keeps the body going. So, there's a, another saying that says, if you don't use it, you lose it. You don't use it, you lose it. This, this, this is the same across everything. Even your skills, you don't use it, you lose it. The human brain, you don't use it, you lose it. And this is why, from most, most people are explaining that most of us who get to older ages and start picking up heavy illnesses like Alzheimer's and all kinds of things, we abandon our brain. We just stopped using it. Then what happened? It stopped knowing how to learn. Hence, learn to learn. Learning to learn. We must learn. We must keep asking questions. Because when you ask questions, you push your mind to... The human mind is one of those things that... Like I said to people, you can... They don't dissect the human body and then they say, Oh, look, there's the mind. There is... You will not find anywhere in the human body called mind. But it's there. That's our spirituality. So the beauty of the human mind is it's, it's, it's boundless. It's endless. It's untouchable. And this is why, you know, even in relationships or with friends, I've done a video on relationships, you never know what a person is thinking. No, I mean, apart from... Apart from the, you know, the superheroes, which are my favorite movies, like the X-Men, you get the one who, who has the capability of hearing people. He looks at you, he knows what you're thinking. Oh, okay, only in super, superhero movies. But in reality, it's one of those things that God did to all of us that nobody knows the other person's mind. And that's why when I say to people, there is no need for envy, there's no need for uh, jealousy, there's no need for all of these emotions that we throw out at each other. Why? Because your mind can be stretched to whatever imagination you can have. The mind is endless. One of the one of my books here, you know, the the what's it called? Uh, um, the science of getting rich. It says the mindset is like a fertile, endless fertile ground. Whatever you sow in it, you can germinate it. You can bring it about. Isn't that amazing about our mindset? So, if you allow your mindset to actually pick up, to actually grow things, to actually think, you can pull it out of a negative zone into a positive zone. You can make your mindset work for you. You can change your future by just changing, shifting, being born again, having new thoughts. And like I said, one of the best ways to do this is lifelong learning. You're never too old to learn. And you're never too young to learn. Learning is meant to be a continuous thing. Continuous. There, there was, uh, when I was doing my, my course, you know, there was a story of this man, lifelong learning, and uh, he, 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 he dropped out of school at the age of 15 because his parents were poor and they couldn't afford his school fees and everything. And all he did was just go to the library and read. Go to the library and read and started traveling and as he was traveling he was documenting everything he experienced in the end he became so knowledgeable remember he was reading everywhere he went he would go to he would register with the library and read just go there sit in the library read sit in the library read document experiences and he wrote loads of books hundreds and hundreds of books because he just taught himself I mean, the beauty right now with technology, you can reach the world. You can reach anyone. So you don't have to lock yourself into one location and say, that's me, nobody knows me. Just whatever it is that takes your fancy, throw it out there. You see, like, I love my African outfit, 
all this jewelry, all these outfits, you know, the gele and the the, the 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 precious stones and all of these things are things that I'm already selling. I'm throwing it out. Now it's you know for people who don't understand it, they'll think, oh yeah, what is that? But it's nothing to do with you if you don't understand it. People who understand it understand it and they want it. So you will create your own tribe. That's what they call it, your tribe. People who love what you represent, what you represent. They are looking for you. Hence, what you want is looking for you. So you have to meet what you want halfway. By being present, by being there, by answering, I'm here. Because if you don't say, I'm here, look at my outfit, I make these outfits and I sell them, people will not know that I know how to do it. I created what I call the African queen with all this because I know there are people out there who want this. But they don't know where to get it from. So here I am. I'm here. I make African fashion, African queen. I have Instagram page for it. African queen. Queen with three in between. Q-U-3-E-E-N. African Q-U-3-E-E-N. African queen. And I have great dreams for it. Because I can do it. It's there. Go to Nigeria. Fabrics are endless. All you have to do is design it. Add value. And so, that's mindset. That's mindset. You allow your mind to think. You brand your own things. Your own thinking. You add value to it. But if you stay in your state of mind thinking that unless you go to England, unless you go to America, unless you go to Dubai, you go to Mexico, you go to, unless those places, human beings are there already doing their own thing. And so by the time you go there to try and start setting up yourself, people who are there are way ahead. When are you going to catch up? But if you stay where you are and carry on with what you know, and push it and push it using technology right now that we have do you not see how you're better off it is the mindset and this mindset thing is one of the best things i learned from reading that book by because it explained clearly this programming that we've been dealing with all our lives from when we were young they started making us feel that something in us was wrong or what do they know? They're ignorant. No, we know a lot. We know a lot. Like in the Matrix, take the red pill and come out of that program. You don't need to follow, follow, follow. I call it follow, follow. We, we, we say that in Nigeria. Why are you following me every time? You can come out with your own thing. We need to come out with our own things. There's so much opportunities right there in our Africa that's begging us to what you what you want is waiting for you it's begging us please come and use me come and try me out come and pull me out of life make me reality that's why god said go ye and multiply go and multiply me our fruit trees our our root crops our our vegetables all those things are sitting down there waiting for us to come and multiply them so that our own people too will feel good and we're all chasing the, the sun that doesn't exist in another man's land because it doesn't exist there. We, it doesn't exist there. We need to go back to our roots. As Dr. Africa would say, he said, people without the culture don't exist. We need to find ourselves again. That thing I read and, you know, I, I put it on my, on my Instagram channel. Before slavery, there was history in Africa. What is that history? We need to find ourselves again and stop chasing everybody. Because, I mean, in as much as social media is, is really good and everything, all you're hearing is other people pushing their stories in your face, pushing their story in your... Oh, come, come I'll show you how I made one million. Come, I'll show you how I made five million in two days. And you actually, trust me, I've bought into all those things. They lead you nowhere. If you haven't got any original thoughts. 
You know why? Because as long as they are ahead of you, you can never catch up with them. By the time you think you're getting closer, they're already pulling further away. You're getting closer, they're pulling. Oh yeah, and, and then I had a mentor who then taught me how to, and, and then I had to, and what is that? Find your original thing. And the only way you can do that is by shifting your mindset. Shifting your mindset, change it. Be born again, have a new thought. Allow the things around you to guide you. Start doing lifelong learning. Read books. I'm constantly reading. That's what's helped me. I'm constantly reading. I don't give up on myself. Don't give up on yourself. Because like I said to everybody, tell you, put the right thoughts into your mind. And the only way you can stimulate your mind, remember when I said about long, lifelong learning, the only way you can stimulate your mind, which is why I said, you don't use it, you lose it. The only way you can stimulate your mind is by hearing other people talk to you. Why? Because you don't have all the answers. None of us have all the answers. None of us. Even the best of them out there still learn from each other. And so I'm not ashamed to say I learn from people. I watch people's videos. I listen to other people talk. I buy their books and I read. And one of the best things about reading other people's stories is you actually live their life. You live their life. And some of the, what some of, most of them are advising to, you need a mentor. You need someone to guide you and hold your hands and say, this is how I did it. That's what we've done with, with the braiding. We're practically like your mentor. If you wanted to go into hair business, I'm happy to guide you how I did it and what I did and what I know about clients and how you can keep your clients going. That's the kind of thing you don't just achieve in one day. And so if you want results, you need to allow other people to speak to your mind. The people who don't get anywhere, I'll tell you the honest truth today, is people who lock their mind. The minute you put that padlock on your mind and say, that's it, I know everything, you're practically not going anywhere fast. You're going, you're going nowhere fast. And, and you know, this thing they call communication is so important because what happens, people who lock themselves off from the world, you know what happened? They end up talking to themselves. And when you start talking to yourself, what do people say? That's a mental case happening there. That's a mental case. So you need to be in the midst of other people and hear their views. And if that midst of people is not necessarily sitting with other people, at least hear them. Now technology is here. Go on YouTube. Go on Facebook. Hear other people talk. Buy their books. Read it. Add to your knowledge. When The more people's books you read, the more you live their lives. And you know what happens? They say, if you read if you read a thousand books, you live a thousand lives. Wouldn't you want to live a thousand lives? I would. And I do it. Because when you do that, you help yourself. You change your mindset. It supports your well-being. It helps with your, you know, your, your, your brain cells. It, it, it starts to make you see things differently. That's the mind shifting slowly shifting you don't see things in one way again you begin to see things in so many other ways that's the place i want all of us to be where we see things differently not the only way we've always known it so as usual i'm here ready to support i'm here ready to help i'm here ready to guide because, you know, one of the things that actually help the older you become, the more wisdom you get, the more knowledge you take on. I spent half more, more than half of my life in Africa, now another half of it in the UK, and I've traveled to as many places in the world as possible. I, I can clearly sit here and say to you, or stand here and say to you, I have accumulated so much knowledge over the years. And I know quite a lot. I know quite a lot that I'm happy to share. 
And so I've come to this place I call self-realization. And that's where I want you to come to too. Self-realization. Where from you understanding what's going on in your life, you can help to change what will happen tomorrow. So I'm going to leave it here today and I'll say thank you so much for being part of our journey and being part of us. Remember to, you know, give us a thumbs up if you like what we do. Remember to send us your comments and, you know, we'd like to hear from you. If what we're doing, like I always say, it's contributing to your growth, to your well-being, to your seeing life differently, to your thinking. And press that notification bell so that you get to know whenever we upload something. Remember to share it with your friends as well. We all need to be there for each other. We all need to grow as, as, um, as a tribe. Tribe in the sense of we're thinking alike, you know, people who think alike, that's, that's a tribe. It's not necessarily where you're from and who you know. Da, da, da. It's about that way of thinking. We need to grow. We want to create a better world when we're all happy and peaceful. So I look forward to seeing you in the next video and thank you so much and God bless you.